good morning. Just uh, waiting for a few people to catch up to the notification going out and we'll kick off guys. Hope you're well and your Saturday's off to a good start. So just uh, hang fire for a minute, let that notification go out and then we will we'll kick off. Um, if you've got questions or you'd like to know a little bit more about nutrition, just let me know during the, during the through the feed, during the feed, through the feed. Uh, and if I drift off looking this way, it's because my my actual lens is over here, so I should actually be looking here at you. Um, but uh, it, it can be distracting when you see yourself. You just want to look at the screen, don't you, when you're on these sorts of things. Let me know if the sound quality is okay, please. If you wouldn't mind just popping a comment in now, right at the start, that'd be really useful for me. Um, because uh, I can adjust that. Hi, Tony. Nice to see you, mate. <coughs> there we go. There's a notification going out. So we shouldn't be too much longer. Uh, and we can start. Just let a few more people join. Otherwise, I'll just end up repeating myself. Hi, Tanya. If you can let me know, guys, if the if the sound's okay, that would be great. And it does take a couple of minutes for the notifications that you type to come through to me as well. So um, anything that uh, that, that you, you, you send to me will take a couple of minutes before it pops up on the comments. So uh, do, do let me know your questions as soon as you get them. Uh, get them typed into the comments and then I will respond. Well, it's a bit disappointed in it at the moment, this weather. I thought I was going to be sitting out here with no, no need to have a hoodie on, just have uh, a t-shirt on, but it's a bit breezy and uh, quite cloudy as well, which is disappointing. But all being well, I don't actually, I've not looked at the forecast, but all being well, things should improve this afternoon. I hope. Um, thanks, Tanya. That's great to know. Cheers. Morning, Tony. <coughs> so uh, we, uh, we'll we we'll kick off in a second, guys. Just let a few more people join in and then we'll start this topic. So I guess um, if you if you haven't seen me live before, which I can't imagine is many people. Thanks, Phil. Nice to see you, mate. Cheers, Tony. Um let me know your questions, pop them in the comments as soon as you can, because the sooner you get them to me, the sooner we can have that, that really good debate going on and conversation, and I can come back to you with what you need to know. I've gone uh, and had a little look over the last couple of days at some of the studies that have been done on nutrition, and it's quite interesting to understand what people have researched in the past, what sort of stuff that they've come up with, how that's been questioned, rigorously uh, researched and also reviewed by other scientists, peer reviewed, and then uh, how that's ultimately morphed into what we use now as runners or what we don't use because we may be not aware of it. So I'm going to start, uh, start things off now and talk to you about the sort of basics first of all uh, of running nutrition and then we'll go into a little bit more of the detail backed up by the scientific side of things if that's okay again if you just joined me please pop any comments you've got on runners nutrition it doesn't really matter what they are they might be about carb loading how to uh, use nutrition in your taper period what you should use on on race day how do you factor in nutrition in long runs? Say, I don't know, whatever long is for you. It might be a half marathon training run. It might be a marathon training run, whatever. How do you factor nutrition into those safely and effectively? Because there are different things you can do depending upon the length of run. So my experience as a runner, most of you will know already. Uh, I probably bored you with this. But my experience as a runner started in the mountains and moved on to trails and then ultimately ended up on the roads too. Uh, so a various sort of... Um, and you, Stevie, nice to see you, mate. But through a various sort of range of different race distances, I ended up uh, training in the mountains because I wanted to run at the Welsh 3000s race, many of you will know, and ultimately got reasonably okay at that. Um, ended up winning that for several years on the run, and then I took that experience and put it into the roads and saw some incredible differences. So for those of you who are thinking, how do I improve on road? How do I get faster? One of the simplest things you can do is not necessarily run up mountains, though by all means give that a go because it will help, but is build your speed and your strength up on hill reps. So when it comes down to nutrition, it's really important to power those runs the right way. How do we do that? So let's start, and don't forget, this will apply to racing as well as training, although there are some nuanced details and nuanced differences between those two at times. But generally speaking, whatever you do for your, your race day should, in general terms, work for training too. Okay. So for shorter distances, most people tend to say to me, I don't need to 
to bother with nutrition for a 5k do i jeff i don't need to bother for 10k do i even need to bother really for a half marathon or for those those people who who consider themselves a faster runner they might turn around and they might say well i'll be done in my half marathon in the time it takes certain people to do a 10k and of course there is some element of truth in that the shorter the race distance the less likely you are to need nutrition and it's not uh, it's not really um the case in my mind that actually uh, you necessarily need to use the word need because very often for me i think it's what you want to achieve so if i coach you already or you've been coached by me you'll know my first question to you is what is your outcome what is the thing you want to achieve right so if i'm going into a race i want to know um, very often it's about time what time do i want to finish that finish that race and how do i want to feel when i cross the line because there's two different questions there, right? There's first of all time. Well, I want to want to complete that that 10k in in an hour and a half or in 40 minutes or whatever it is. Um, or do I want to finish that 10k feeling comfortable? Because actually, that 10k is my lesser priority race. I've got a really important race coming up. That's down the line. Okay, so there's two different things going on. What's your outcome? And what is how? What do you want to feel when it, when you finish that race? You know, is it going to be an easy race for you? Or is it going to be a race where you think to yourself, no, I'm going all out, mate, because this is my A priority race, Jeff. This is the one that I want to have. You know, in everything I do in 2020, 2021, 2022, whatever you're training for, this race is the one that means the most to me. That's a different outcome. And notice I use the word outcome rather than result or time or pace or any of those things. It's important to, to frame this the right way. So outcome's important. Uh, so if your race you've got coming up is your a priority race in other words there is no other race in that year or training cycle so year obviously the full the full year you've got in front of you training cycle slightly different training cycle is a period of training so for a marathon let's say a training cycle is often 16 to 20 weeks between those two extremes depends on how much running you've already done in the year um and of course how far away your race is so if you've got um, an A priority race lined up, you know where it is, what's your outcome for that race? You want to be on form, ready to go, and make that the best race you've ever done at that particular distance? Or are you just doing it to train for something else? So it's important to know these things before we even look at the question of nutrition. These are your big, your big questions that you need to ask yourself or your coach before you even start looking at how do I, how do I get nutrition right for this particular race? Um, so what priority is it and what is your outcome not what time do you want to finish it in because that's not yet relevant what's relevant is what is the outcome at the end of that race or during that race and once you know that you can plan everything you can plan your training plan with your coach or yourself if you're going to do that you can plan your nutrition into that you must also plan your rest and recovery so there's a lot of things I'm not touching on today if you've seen my previous live videos or you're a member of your running coach my closed coaching group um, and if you're not, please do pop me a message and I, I can get you in there. Um, you'll know that there's a lot of different things to do when it comes to training. Nutrition is key, <clears throat> obviously. So you know what your outcome is. You know that this particular race is, is, is important or more important for you. The question then is how do you build a training plan around that? And obviously there's loads of generic ones online. You can do that. You can come to coaches like me and we'll build one for you. Um, but in any event, I'm going to assume a couple of things. First of all, that you've got a race that's high priority for you and it's lined up. Second of all, that you have a training plan of some description ready to go as well. So you know roughly what you're going to do and you know that, <coughs> excuse me, you know that um, there's a date at some point. It might be, it could be whenever. This advice is, is, is suitable for whenever. Um, but preferably you'll 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 be at the starting point of any training cycle or any training plan you'll be right at the start when you're looking at nutrition for the first time so we've got all that stuff done that's out the way that's boxed up we know where we are we've got a starting point the next thing to do is to think about how you uh how you want to feel on race day so it's important because if you if you start a race um and and you don't get your nutrition right the disadvantages of that are immense. You could end up hitting the wall, and that's not just, by the way, as most people seem to think in the marathon. You know, you can hit a wall at any distance. If you're an ultra runner or you're running long distances, you'll definitely have some kind of um, psychological, some kind of mental battle going on. And part of that mental battle, I just lined up. Yeah, sorry, 
sorry phil <laughs> um part of that mental battle in your race is that you you know you you're going to feel challenged you're going to feel stressed pressured ultras are not the only distance you know if this is your first 5k um or first 10k then you'll still feel that pressure you'll still feel that nervous energy at the start of a race what you don't want if you saw my brief live yesterday you'll know this what you don't want is to be thinking two days before the race or a day before the race or morning a race day gosh have i got my nutrition right did i eat the right stuff have i got the right things to take with me on today's marathon or 5k or whatever do i need to take anything with me and i think i think absolutely um that nutrition can apply to any race distance now most people are of the opinion i think that actually if you're doing a 5k 10k and maybe for those of you who are quite fast to half marathon you don't need to have supplementary nutrition now <coughs> excuse me there is lots of scientific evidence um, out there, and there has been for some considerable time, actually, that suggests perhaps that's not strictly true. So back in the, back in the 19, I think it was a 1920 or 1924 Boston Marathon, uh, a study was being done of the runners as they finished that race. In fact, one of them was arrested, believe it or not, by the local PD because they thought this particular runner was, was, had been on the source, had been drinking and was drunk. And what had actually happened was that they were hypoglycemic. So the glycogen stores in their bodies, as you'd expect in a marathon, had been emptied and they'd hit the wall and they were all over the show. I mean, you've probably seen videos of people like that, the ends of races where they're just, they look a mess because um, they've given everything they can during that race. And in this study, they found that, unsurprisingly, the reason people were hyperglycemic was because they'd used all of their reserves, their muscle reserves of glycogen, and their blood reserves of glycogen too, because, of course, you've got three different reserves of, of, of energy. When I say glycogen, um, I mean ultimately energy um, created by carbohydrate. And they had very little left in their bodies. They were all over the show. Uh, and, and so these studies sort of had a look at that. Moving on from that, towards the sort of late 20s, early 30s, a couple of different people on both sides of the Atlantic who were, who were studying these sorts of events and uh, effects on runners found that uh, and suggested that having supplementary carbohydrate either before or during your race will make a massive difference to race performance. So it was Grace Edelston, I think, from memory, was one of those people. Um, and she wrote a textbook called muscular endurance i think it was and in there she just said look if you if you had i think it was sugar candies i think she was the american one um she said, if you have sugar candies it's surprising how much we can push the limits just because we won't have that hypoglycemic problem and then what happened for the next 50 60 years there or thereabouts all of that research all of that evidence was conveniently ignored and i don't really know why um, and even to this day so there are some some runners still i'm sure you'll know people who would argue about carb loading or look at carb loading as a one meal pasta based meal the night before or you know we all know runners don't we you probably take the take the opinion um or suggest the point of view that um carb loading i don't need to do that i'm all right i'll just get out there and run i'll just eat the way i normally eat now it's fine if that works for you not a problem but if it doesn't why make your life harder I'm of the strong opinion that if, if a runner can do something that is easier and makes greater and more effective performance results, why not do that? Why not make your life easier and get a better result for it? This is one of those things. So the, the, the Boston research and the, and the scientific studies that followed it were clear. They showed clear and obvious gains to anyone who carb loaded before a race and interestingly, ate carbohydrate during a race. Now here's the thing, and here's the thing that really interested me. When I go out, and when I've gone out running, I, as I told you at the start of this video, I started in the mountains, and I was um, out there, and I was doing ultra distance events, and there was a lot of physical graft involved. You know, you're climbing up hills, you're coming down the other side, loads of different types of muscles, your slow twitch and fast twitch, um, they're all working away, and they're all solidly, solidly performing at output. So I would eat during the race. And over the course of the decade or the seven or eight years that I was, I was training and I was racing, what I'd realized was often I didn't want to. I was running down the side of a hill. And I remember distinctly near, just around the corner from Snowden, I was coming down um, Garnaduga, Garnaduga to um, Kubgok and thought, 
I know, according to my training plan, I had it written down on a piece of paper. Um, so I'd have a little piece of paper and I'd be looking at that and I'd be going, right, okay, now I need to just, oh yeah, it's 11 o'clock, I've got to do this, I've got to eat a Mars bar or whatever it was, or the confectionery is available. And I wouldn't want to eat it because I'd had a breakfast an hour before <clears throat> and I'd, I'd just eaten that thing anyway. The reason I was forcing myself to do that was because I knew that if I didn't, and I waited till the valley stop where we were going to have, you know, we're going to have support, we're going to have some, something to eat, something to drink. <clears throat> Excuse me. It would be too late because my body reserves would be dropping significantly and my body would be pulling carbohydrate out of muscles. Why let it happen? I want my body to be relying on as much circulating carbohydrate for the organs that use it and focus my carbohydrate in the muscles on only those interactions in other words the fibre of the muscle fibres which uses carbs as energy the fibre of those muscle fibres then I don't want to have to waste time and carbohydrate in stores when I can pop it in my mouth easily enough and use that instead so that's a really 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 important point about why carbohydrates in races is so vital now that brings me back to the point I started this whole section on, which is, do I really need carbs when I'm in a 5k or 10k jacket? Yeah. Yeah, it depends, doesn't it? But generally speaking, how important is the race? If it's really important to you, I would say, get in those carbs, ready to go. Now, that might be a little dextrose energy tablet. It might be a, a Kit Kat Chunky. It might be a flapjack that you've made yourself. Whatever it is for you. It might be something that, you know, is, is healthier than, than my bad choices. I just want something though that is really, and it's important to this, really important this next bit, it's got to be something that you can easily eat, doesn't mess around with your digestion, because what you don't want is, is gastrointestinal distress when you're there, when you're on your training run, or you, or you race, and suddenly you start to feel that pain in your stomach and think, oh gosh, that's it, I'm going to have to walk, you don't want that easily digested, really effective, really high carb content, that's important. Check your list of ingredients on anything that you buy. If you're making your own flapjacks or you're buying something yourself, have a look on the list of ingredients and see what's in there. How much carbs per 100 grams? Dead simple comparator, really effective. I used to do it all the time. Go around the supermarket and have a look at that. Um, and as sad as it sounds, it worked well because I knew that every time I'd take my hand in my bum bag, and uh, yeah, that, that, that is a high high level fashion choice. Get yourself a bum bag if you still can. Um, when I stick my hand in there, got some bit out, I knew it was high carb content, so it would work really, really well. And I'd be able to digest it quickly, wouldn't have any gastrointestinal problems, <coughs> excuse me, and all of those sorts of things were already predetermined, already worked out in my mind, and I knew what I was doing. 5K, 10Ks, if they're important, and we talked about this right at the start of this. What's the priority of your race? Is it high priority or not? If it's high priority, why would you not want to make this the easiest you can make it? So for me, getting out there. <coughs> excuse me. I'm going to drink of water. I think. Getting out there. Having that immediate, immediate sense of knowing that you can, you can power your run more effectively. And it's, it's going to be easier. You absolutely want to do that. <clears throat> Let's hope that, that pint stays there. So, what are we up to? Um, have I done it? Have I done five or ten k's with with nutrition on board? What I would what I would do, and I'm jumping ahead a bit here, is I would actually eat something at the start of the race. This is a bit of a a sneaky trick that um, <clears throat> excuse me, I've not I've not noticed many people do. So, if you're at the start of a race, you're about twenty minutes out. I'd have some kind of high energy thing to eat. Might be a gel might be a sports drink, might be a chocolate bar, whatever it is for you, have that at the start, 20, 25 minutes before if you can have it. If you're worried about digestion, and I'll come on to how you can shortcut that problem in a minute, so stay with me. All you need to do is test it out in the training room, but have it 25, 30 minutes before, bang, and have a chocolate bar, something like that. You won't believe the, the improvement and the amount of energy that you get from that. It's like a shot in the arm, I, I imagine. And you, I've, I've used it on the Betsy Cord Trail 10K. I was there, it was at the start. If you've ever been to that race, you'll know it's a massive half mile hill to start with. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's pretty high 
uh, it's a pretty high altitude gain it's a lot of effort there's a lot of people crammed into a small area so overtaking is difficult uh, and it just wears you out both physically and psychologically that bit of extra energy straight up that hill no problem at all and I was whizzing through people at the same time it's not to say how good I am it's just to say that the technique can work for everybody so yeah so shorter distances don't preclude nutrition good nutrition from helping you because it's, it's a key strategy that can help so let's look at uh, just briefly before we go on to, to race day strategy and stuff like that let's look at the slightly longer distances so for, for, for us it's half marathons it might be marathons or even ultra distances if those sorts of things that, that you're interested in this next bit will be very good very interesting for you I talked before about the the, the boston uh, marathon by the way guys if you join me um, or if you you miss the start if you've got questions the two two to three minutes between you typing the question and me seeing it on the screen so any questions at all on nutrition please pop them through now in the comments and i'll see them in a couple of minutes and i'll start i'll be able to answer them for you so please do pop them in the comments there longer distances we talked before about the boston marathon remember that one in 1924 that we we, we chatted about um, and what the results of that were and how they sort of did that research as a result of that um it was it was obvious to to, to some scientists that as we said um glycogen stores and things like that were were affected by longer distances but what people didn't know is why um and how long it took to restock your glycogen stores after a run now, if you're in training for a marathon or a half marathon especially a marathon this will be very interesting for you i think there are two types of storage in the muscles one is pro, -gly uh, pro glycogen storage and the other is macro glycogen storage the those of us who are doing longer runs marathon distance training runs and so on it's the macro storage areas that are important because they take quite some time to replenish if you do a marathon distance ish run if you're on a high carbohydrate diet already take you up to 24 hours to replenish the glycogen in your in your muscles now that fact is is useful to know because actually if you think about that think about your longer training runs people who i'm coaching now you're probably doing let's say if, if you've got a marathon coming up or you had a marathon coming up you'd be sort of thinking right i'd probably be between jeff 16 to 20 21 miles in my longest training run as you get into that sort of high high teens, early 20 distance, it could be taking you nearly a day to replenish your carbohydrate. And that's not even talking about how long it takes to recover from fatigue or the rate or the, or the run effort. We're not even touching on that. We're just talking about nutrition here. Think about that every time you run. If Even if you're already on a high carb diet, you're still gonna take nearly 24 hours to replenish it. Why is that important? Well, because if you go out for a run two days later or the next day, you could be at risk of being only partially replenished in terms of your muscle stores, which means A, they're tired and damaged, because they will be. Running inevitably damages muscles, it's just a fact. Two, they're down in terms of fuel. So they're damaged, they've got less fuel. All of those sorts of things are negatives in terms of how our training is progressing. And as we get to that final sort of push, we get to that final peak period in our training, we need all of these things ticked off and right. So how do we how do we, how do we counter those things out? I'm not suggesting that for, for many people high carbohydrate diets are good or effective for them. Not good, sorry, effective for them is what I meant to say. But for a lot of us, they can be really beneficial. If you're the sort of person that can cope with that, and if you want to test, I would suggest testing way back early on in your training cycle then i would suggest that getting the right carbohydrates in post run is imperative it's key so after you've done a run certainly during it uh, but after you've done a run you've got a small window of opportunity where the body maximizes the carbohydrate intake and that window is usually under an hour 45 minutes to under an hour there or thereabouts so as soon as you finish that run if you're away somewhere like when i go out to wales running I try and have something in the car with me that I can quickly make or just consume straight away that I know is good nutrition, it's high in carbs, it's got a decent amount of protein and fat in there as well, and it's all in one bang. So for those of you who, 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 who can take them, 
a protein shake, a whey concentrated protein shake with um, a bit of healthy uh, peanut butter, some frozen fruit or, or just real fruit, whatever, um, gets all of those macros in. You can get it quickly blended before you go, a bit of milk maybe as well, and it's all in one, it's done. Dead simple, quick and effective. And that's what you want. You want to make sure that post every single training run you do, you're getting the right nutrition in, in that, that sort of magic window um, as quickly as you can. So, for, so, so the, the, those of us who are doing longer runs, that's particularly important. If you're doing shorter runs, it doesn't actually, it doesn't actually make any different. Getting that good nutrition is important. The window is the same. There will still be, there will still be that window, that opportunity where you don't want to, to put your muscles on, on at a disadvantage. You want to make sure you're giving them everything they need. So, so doing what I've just said is, 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 is super important and vital too. Okay. So let's look briefly. And, and guys, if you're still with me, if, you've, um, if you missed the, comp the, the chat before we had, comments take two or three minutes to come through. So <laughs> pop them in now and I'll be able to answer your running nutrition questions for you live. If anyone's got any, let me know. So talking about um, talking about all distances now, and talking about carbs particularly, um, we said before, didn't we, that quite a lot of runners, sort of, or quite a lot of scientists over the last sort of fifty or sixty years, haven't really looked at carb um, carb intake, high carbohydrate diets as particularly either effective or necessary. And actually, when you look at the research that was done back in the twenties, back in the thirties, on both sides of the Atlantic there was a clear and obvious correlation between carbohydrate intake and increased performance. Now, for any of you who've been on my events or have had me coaching you, you will know that my, my conversation around carb loadings, loading is, um, is passionate <laughs> and implored. Um, but the first thing and the most important thing, and this is really key, that you should understand about carbs and, and how they load into your body is that you need to understand your body. It's as simple as that. So you've got a lot of training runs usually, whether you're training for a 5K, a, a 10K marathon, half, ultra, whatever, you'll have a training window, you'll have a coaching plan. Using that time to work out, first of all, go out and have breakfast, then go out for your run. And how long, work out how long it takes you personally from having breakfast to when you get that feeling in your stomach, you start to feel tired, you start to feel that almost hitting the wall feeling of having no energy or having low energy. What is the time window? And then when you can work that out in your shorter training runs, you can then determine, right, so half an hour, maybe an hour before I feel that, or whatever it is, I must have supplementary nutrition. That is such a powerful tool, and that's gonna be so useful for you when you're doing your run and your race itself. Working that through all of your training runs is so important because then you're starting to use them, not just to get ready for your race, actually, but for powering your way through a strategic approach to nutrition. I talked yesterday in my short live uh, about how strategy and tactics are so important. I'm not necessarily gonna go into too much detail, but just to say that doing that in your training runs will give you so much information and knowledge about your body it's the difference that makes the difference on race day. If you're prepared to go and do all these different things that we've talked about today, you'll be ahead of all of those other runners that you see on either side of you on race day. Because most people won't. Most people won't take the extra time and the extra effort it requires to do the job. So, whilst you're training, one of the other things to work out is I'm about to talk to you about carb loading and when I go through that, please bear in mind this fact. Test this approach out in training. Don't wait until X days before your race day to think, oh yeah, Jeff said um, blah, 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 I should do this, that and the other. Test it out in your training run first. In training runs, in loads of them, Jeff said do this, right, I'm gonna try that. Oh, I might do that little approach or I might do this thing differently. Test it all out. That's another reason why your training runs are there. It's not just to get you physically uh, ready for the endurance that's going to be required or the speed that's going to be required. They're there to help you get everything right. 
Tanya, thank you for your question. So do you not recommend fasted runs then? I usually do my long runs fasted, although I do take cliff box after an hour or so. It's a good question. Um, and guys, if you've got questions, please pop them in the comments. They take two or three minutes to come through, so it'd be great if you've got questions on this, you pop them through. If you're watching on Catch Up, pop your questions directly in the feed or to me as a DM, and I'll pick them up and I'll respond to them. Do I not recommend fasted runs? Um, I do actually recommend it. In fact, funnily enough, Tanya, a while back I did I did a couple myself, um, and I learned a number of things. One, I learned that a fasted run, for anyone who's not used to it, is something to start off at a lower mileage and a lower intensity than you would normally do. Um, I went out for a run. Uh, I, it was it was uh, it was in Snowdonia, I think, and I went up the back of this the back of the mountain, not to the top, just a sort of circuitous route round. From where I was staying, uh, and I was going along quite happily, thinking, "Oh, this fasted running is actually all right. It's not as bad as I thought." Next thing, I felt like I'd lost everything. There was no energy. Um, I felt awful, absolutely exhausted. Definitely hit the wall. And I had a, I had a, had a couple of different, you know, chocolate bars, that type of thing, and 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 thought, "Gosh, I still don't feel any better." And that was because my body had to digest process the carbohydrate, turn it into glycogen, deliver it to various different muscles in my body. They then have to process it, turn it back into fuel that can be used to power their, their twitch, their, their, that sort of mus muscular twitch mechanism that moves us. Um, and so, uh, and you know, you learn this the hard way. I learned it the hard way because uh, I tend to do things like that. Um, but what I realized was I have lots of fuel on board, shorter runs, don't leave it too late and make sure that you're not running at high intensity. So I don't um, I don't always do fasted runs, but I do think they can be effective. A lot of people do fasted runs to sort of, you know, burn fat as, a, as opposed to carbohydrate and that type of thing, and they work to do that. But if you look at studies, you tend to find that people sort of say, oh yeah, they work, but you know, it takes months and months and months and ultimately it doesn't make a difference. It does make a difference. It does make a difference. But this is not a short uh, a short thing as you as you've probably discovered, Tanya. Um it takes over three months, over six months to truly, truly become um ready to use fasted runs as an as an approach. People use the word fat adapted or or to burn fat instead of carbs. Those two things are, are not necessarily true. Um you, you will generally speaking find that runners will usually always burn fats um, more than they will burn carbs because it's, it's carbs, it's glycogen that's stored in your muscles. But you can increase the amount of fat that you burn within a band. And that's the thing that you're affecting. You're not burning more fat than carbohydrate. You're still burning carbs. Um, so, for example, fats burn in a carbohydrate flame, right? You've got to have the carbs burning to actually use fats in the first place. But you can increase through fat-adapted running, um, as they call it, or fasted runs is probably a better term. You can increase the amount of fats you use and you, that you burn in running. Obviously, to do that, and this is a complex subject and there's a lot to it, uh, also to do that, you need to reduce your intensity. There is no point going out there and going, right, I'm going to burn fats in my speed workout or my hill reps or my interval session or my tempo runs or my fart lap runs. You're not going to burn the fats then. You've got to slow it down so you're at an aerobic pace. Simple terms, I've got to be able to have a conversation with my mate who's there or my mate who's there that I'm running with. If you can't talk to the person you're running with, you're not aerobic, which means you're less likely to be burning more. Here we go, that's that word, more fats. So... Um, that's important. So I don't. I, I do. I'm quite happy with fasted runs to be to, to answer your question, um, and I think I think they're great. Um, but I would say that they um, they need to be managed right, and you need to understand. Here we go again. Right at the start, if you were listening at the start, folks, you'll know the outcome. What's your outcome? What is the point of doing fasted runs for you? So if if it's to if it's to burn um, more fats in a race, you've got an you've got an, let's say an, an ultra event. So I know Tanya, you have because I'm coaching you. Um, then yeah, absolutely doing that will be crucial for you, and really important because the more fats you can utilize as an energy source, what a brilliant trick, right? That's the key. Um, for ultra runners or for anyone doing longer distances who's not going for a massive speed that you've got 
I mean, this is an amazing fact. This blew me away when I when I actually first heard it. Okay, so as a runner, as anyone, we've got about two thousand ish calories of 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 fuel in our body and carbs. We've got over a hundred thousand <laughs> calories of fuel in our bodies. In our bodies, an average person from fats. That's a massive difference. I do it so I don't have to get up as early, says Tanya. Tanya, I, I can appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm very much uh, of the opinion that that is a good thing. <laughs> Why do you think I chose 11 o'clock for the start time for this today? Um, if you've got questions, guys, pop them in the comments now. It takes two or three minutes for them to pop up. So don't forget that two or three minute lead time between when you type the comment and when I get it. I'd love your questions uh, on running nutrition. And I'll answer them now for you. If you've missed this, if you're watching it on Catch Up, please do pop them through to me as a DM or here in the comments and I will respond to them. So um, we were talking there about fat, fat running, uh, using um, fasted running to 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 effect change in your running style. Um, so if you missed that or you're interested in that, do watch uh, do watch the, the, the after video when I post it afterwards. So let's just quickly nip forward and now we are a few days before race day. So there's loads of different tactics people can do um, and do in their running before a race to, to give them an edge. Um, just bear with me while I get a little bit of an edge here. Considering I like the sound of my own voice so much, you wouldn't think I'd, uh, I'd require a drink, would you? <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we're, let's say we're a week out from running, or well, maybe nine days out from, from running your race uh, or there or thereabouts. This is the time to take some really important decisions. Decisions that ultimately you should know the answer to already because you will have tested them in your training plan. So we talked about that already, right? Are you going to fat? Um, are you going to fast um, and reduce the amount of carbohydrate that you're using and increase the amount of fats that you're eating in the next few days? Because very often people fat load. You've heard of carbohydrate loading. There's fat loading too. I'm not going to talk about that today. Um, because that can be um, well, it can be quite a difficult process to go through. So if you're not used to it, have a little look at that, or have a chat with me online, um, and I can talk you talk you through. But the pluses and the minuses of that approach: Are you going to caffeine fast or not? Um, that's the decision to take nine days out from race day, uh, and then ultimately, what are you going to do about carbohydrates? And this is really where, for me, I've seen huge improvement and huge gains. In, in a load of different races, I've done this approach for a 5k uh, um, and, and I've advised some of my runners to do this for even for a part run if that run is, is important to them. Um, thanks for that question Tony, I will come back to that in a second if that's okay. Um, so what, what, do you, what do you do for carbs, how do you carb load? Three days. For most races so I'm assuming here now this is an A priority race for you, the most important one of the year. Uh, and if that's the one, if you've got to that point, three days before any race like that, if it's a 5K or a 10K, you could do it two days out. For a half marathon or a marathon, do this three days out, okay? And follow this approach. Weigh yourself and convert that, if you don't already, into kilograms. Uh, I'm an, I use Imperial, so this took me a bit of getting used to, but it is easier. Convert your weight to kilograms. So I weigh, on a good day, about 75 kilograms. Um, and then I would times that by 8 or 9, perhaps 10, uh, to get me a number of carbohydrate grams that I will consume every day for those three days. Okay, so 75 grams, 75 kilograms is about 750 grams, maybe seven, 650, 700, seven, 700 rough grams of carbohydrate that I would eat on the Wednesday, then on the Thursday, then on the Friday before my Saturday race day. Okay, so if you've got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday race day, those three days before your race day, you want to be eating that amount of carbohydrate. It's hard to do, <laughs> unbelievably. I found it really difficult to do. Um, but when you, uh, and, it, and in fact, uh, on day two, I was actually, I was pretty sick of eating, to be honest. But the point is, the crucial point is here, that you then get to the stage that you are utterly ready to go. You know for a fact that you're not going to run out of carbs. You know your body is primed and ready to go. 
you know that you, you, during that period you haven't used any calories because you shouldn't be training during those last three days. You should have already, t you know, a week and a half before, be in your taper period. So I should see massive reductions both in distance and intensity. So the three days of carb loading won't be wasted on, on doing exercise. You're not going to lose fitness, by the way, um, f in, in those sort of period, in, in that sort of period. You're not. You're going to lose one thing. And that's fatigue. You're gonna you're gonna benefit as well from reduction in damage to your muscles, and you're gonna ultimately see that by putting those carbohydrate glands into your body, your muscles are ready to go. They're fully stocked with glycogen, and they'll be raring to go when you tow up the line on on, on race day, whenever and whenever that is for you. After that three, two or three days of carb loading, my goodness, you will notice the difference when you kick off. Uh, you'll feel like you've got this amazing amount of energy to go. So. Um, where are we up to? We've done we've done race day. We started that carb loading three days out, yeah, and we know that we've got two more days to go. So day two, same. Day three of the carb load, the same. Then you might wake up on race day morning, <coughs> and you'll you know you'll have your race day breakfast training right the way back in training. All of those weeks of training, you should have been you should have been working out. If you're going to eat on race day morning. Find out what you want to eat, what works for you, what high carbohydrate foods are going to power you through your training runs if they're in the morning. Obviously, if you've got an afternoon race or some other time it's starting, look at the meal before that and, and work out what that needs to be. So if it's, a lunch, you know, if it's an afternoon race, what do you eat for lunch a couple of hours before? How does that work for you? What's the most carbohydrate heavy meal that you can have? Or carbohydrate rich meal that you can have that doesn't give you gastrointestinal distress so so there you go so tony's just commented the carb load worked a treat for that park run pb at birkenhead though i was sick of the sight of carb foods absolutely agree with you tony it's the same with, with when i do it um you're right you, you just get fed up of carbs but as you say tony you've got that pb um and and we work together to to deliver a personal best performance at that at that particular run and i really enjoyed it actually it was great film that um it doesn't matter the distance it's not important what's important as tony rightly says there is what is your outcome for that race it doesn't matter whether it's uh, the european championships park run a 5k a marathon whatever right what's the outcome for that race for you and then we and then we pin the whole strategy on that so um, where was I up to? So you've done, you've done your couple of days of carb loading. You're now on race day morning, and you're thinking, right, okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm just reading your question, Tony, and thinking, can I answer that now? Um, I'll come back to it. Yeah, I'll still come back to it. So um, don't forget, guys, questions in the comments, please. It takes a couple of minutes to come through, so I'll then respond to them for, for, for you. Um, breakfast, you've, you've, you've tested it. You've worked it out, or lunch if it's an afternoon race, you've worked it out on your training period already, so you already have confidence. You don't have to worry about what you're eating. You, you know that this meal, whatever it is, is going to work for you. It's going to work because you've done it countless times in your training runs. There's no gastrointestinal distress in your stomach. You can run off it. You feel fine. Happy days. Have it. For me, that would be two hours to an hour and a half before the race starts. It might be different for you. For many people I've, I've talked to on my training, trail running events, they don't have a meal before they run. But for me, if that works for you, great. But have you tried out enough different options? There's always something, well, there's usually always something you can eat far enough out from a race that will put you in a better place than not doing. And don't forget now, specifically, I'm talking about race day morning. So, have that meal maybe a half an hour, for me it's half an hour, 20 minutes before a race, I will have a little something that's high energy, but crucially is dead easy to, to, to digest. Might be a chocolate bar, might be, probably not a flapjack actually, but it might be something like that. Um, and then I'll eat that and that will give me a massive boost in my performance at, at just at the start point of a race. If your race is longer, or you want to, you know, I've done this in an, on a on a on a on a ten k, right? People say supplementary nutrition in the middle of a race. Why would you do that? I do it because I want to perform better. Simple as that. So if you want to perform at your best in a race, and you want to make it a little bit easier, 
Remember what I said before about why make your life harder? When if you do easier things, you get even greater results. Do this. I have those little dextro en dextros energy tablets, little square, rectangular ones. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and I pop them out, maybe one every kilometer in a 10k or something like that, or one every mile, whatever. Whatever, you, whatever you've got your watch set to beat, Pat, I pop one in. And that just keeps your carbohydrate levels high in the race, which means you've got higher performance likelihood too. Because you go faster, because there's more energy in your system. So it, it, it's, it, you know, it's like you'd expect higher performance from a, a vehicle or a machine if you kept it topped up with the right fuel and so on and so forth. And it's the same with your body, but you can tweak it more effectively because your body's so advanced. Bear with me one second. <coughs> so <coughs> we've, we've done that. We're now in the race. Um, and now we're talking about your question, Tony, here. Phil, thank you for yours. I'll come back to that in a second if that's okay, mate. So pro uh, Tony's asked, does protein help before a race or is it carbs before, then protein after? And I've pretty much been saying it's, it's carbs before, haven't I? But actually, um, whilst that is true and absolutely the case, a bit of protein is no bad thing. Remember, you've been doing your training. And if you've been training, you've been damaging your body. So protein will help repair the muscles. So it's generally in this order. It's carbs, it's then protein, and it's then fats. Y y in fact, you might actually say it's carbs fats and then protein to a degree it'll depend on your training your distances your intensities and how much you've already done in that training period but generally speaking tony yeah i'd, I'd certainly have protein at the end no question of, about that at all but also don't forget your carbs because uh, carbs are there to replenish stores protein's there to help rebuild muscles a bit of fat will also help rebuild um and so in the race though if you had 80% carbs in a product and 20% protein, you'd find that a really, really effective combination. It's that 80 20 rule there just popping up again, isn't it? 80% carbs, 20% protein. You can get bars like that. Those sorts of things are really effective at delivering what you need because if the body can't find carbohydrate, glycogen to fuel it, it will start to remove protein and convert that. It takes a bit longer. Uh, and it's not as effective but for those of us doing longer distances at a slightly slower, slower speed you'll find that quite often the body will do that so watch out for that and make sure that if you're using carbs you're topped up but also that you've got a bit of extra protein there to repair and to replenish those muscular stores so I hope that helps Tony a bit of both there going on I think but definitely 80-20 in race or in your training run and then making sure you've got your protein afterwards too so Phil, you said so you need over a, eat to eat over a kilogram of carbs per day by my formula. What type of carbs would you recommend? So Phil, first of all, my mine was um, a bit extreme in the sense that I went to ten grams per kilogram of body weight. You could probably go down to about six or seven grams per kilogram, just to make it easier on yourself because it's a lot of carbs. Uh, it was a lot of carbs for me, um, and I enjoy food. Um, but yeah, the more generally speaking the more you can have the, the 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 more complete and thorough a job you'll do um what type of carbs would i recommend in that carb loading period um generally speaking i would eat pretty much anything so i'll, I'll give you a clue what i what i am and i'll tell you i'll take you through my my sort of average day when i was doing this breakfast would be a bottle of music with whole milk be a 200 ml glass of fresh not concentrate fresh orange juice or apple juice or something like that um by the way all of these choices where you, I, I would apply the principle i told talked about earlier on in this live stream i'd go around the supermarket i'd get me a little thing i'd look at the back of the thing and say how many grams of car how many grams of carbs in this per 100 grams oh that's more than this i'm having that i'd do it with sultanas raisins and currants you know i'd go around and I'd look how many grams of carbs are in that one compared to that one compared to that one and I'd pick the one that had the most. And I'd build my meal choices out of that knowledge. So the music with whole milk, the, the 200 mils of fresh orange, 
Uh, then I'd have a couple of pieces of toast with some honey on, and then I'd crack on, I'd be off to work, and I'd have second breakfast a few hours later. Uh, and it's frequency as, as well as intensity with food here. I'd have quite a few different meals during the day. Um, my second breakfast maybe will be yogurt with some um, some fruit in there, some honey on top. And then I'd go to lunch, I'd have some, a little pasta pot type meal, something like that, or something I made the night before. And I'd also supplement that with maybe like a bowl of soup and a few slices of bread. I'd then go on to um, afternoon. I might have some some fruit and I'd be checking. There's some websites as well, Phil, that will tell you how many grams of, of, of carbs are in fruit, vegetables, that type of things. So you can maximize your intake of carbs with those as well. I'd be checking what was, was the highest value carbs in, in particular veggies or, or fruits. And I'd be eating those for my afternoon snack. I might have a bit more of that yogurt with honey on, and then I'd go into my afternoon, my evening meal. I'd have um, maximize your carbs. Sometimes um, the refined stuff, like refined grains. Now, normally for good nutrition, I'd recommend unrefined. You know, your your, your brown pastas, brown rices, those sorts of things. Um, but generally speaking, for for, for carb loading, you, you you can sometimes sometimes get more from refined grains. So, on this occasion. Uh, you could allow yourself to drift into less healthy foods. Not always recommended, but if you need the carbs, you need to get them. This is the time for apple turnovers and things like that. Um, but yeah, get the carbs in from all those different sources, maybe a little late afternoon snack. And by the end of that film, what I'd found was I maybe at, at my best, I'd have a target of about 700 grams of carbs. The best I ever did was 550, something like that. You can see how hard it is to get the carbs in. By the end of the second day, I didn't even want to eat them. <laughs> but anyway, you know, you, you've got to try to get that sort of stuff in. If it's an A priority race for you, like we talked about earlier on, you need to maximize that because your performance will be maximized. It really is that simple a relationship. Hopefully, Phil, that answers your question. Uh, and yours earlier on, Tony, and yours, Tanya, too. But if anyone's got any questions, pop them in now. It takes two minutes to come through. Um, so I'm just tying this conversation up now in the next five or ten minutes. Tanya, you've asked, um, well, I'm on board with the idea of second breakfast, right? It worked It worked in the, the Lord of the Rings films. It's worked for me. I am fully supportive of second breakfast, I think. You know, we, we need to do more, um, more second breakfasting for sure. <laughs> so, uh, okay, where were we up to? So we were talking about what happens if, uh, or what happens when you've, when you've, when you're in your race, and I was talking to you about getting that extra fuel in when you're running. It doesn't matter the distance. Don't be, I said it right at the start of this whole live stream, don't be worried about people who say, um, I'm just checking I've answered your question there, Phil. I think I have, let me know if I haven't. Don't be worried about people who say, oh, you don't need to do X because you're doing this distance. Or you don't need to carb load because you're doing a 5K. You don't need supplementary nutrition because you're only doing a 10K. I always listen whenever I hear something like that. If I use hear the word only or it, it's just that and then a race distance comes in, I always pick my ears up then because I think, what am I going to hear and what can I test out to see if this works? I've seen so many benefits with myself and with the runners I coach by doing the things that nobody else does or doing the things that people think they don't need to do. It's quite surprising research it yourself in your training runs or come and talk to me and I'll, I'll give you some advice it doesn't cost anything uh, if you want to be coached I'll coach you um, but it's absolutely the case that you can see incredible gains by doing the stuff no one else does and if that's an advantage to you and you're there on the start line with whomever and whoever next to you and you've got 100 people behind or, or in front of you um, wouldn't you rather have the advantage and or just make the race easier I would absolutely so um, we've done the race, we've succeeded, we've got our outcome and we've seen it happen. And then we've come into that sort of final bit where we think, right, you cross the line and suddenly you just stop running. Why do we do that? <laughs> we, get a, we get a bag and a medal or whatever it is um, and we forget about our cool down. We forget about all those good things. Don't forget though, do not forget about your recovery nutrition. It's so important this. So. For, remember that we talked before about that 45 magic window that's still the case on race day don't forget to do any training runs either get that nutrition whatever it is for you it should include it, all your three macros proteins fats carbs right if it's a training run 
it's even more important actually because you could be running the following day or very close afterwards you want to make sure that you don't waste that time remember what i said about um marathon ish distances you sort of 16 17 miles and upwards it takes a full 24 hours for your body to get glycogen back in that energy back into your muscles any less than that and you won't be fully resourced to run and you'll be fatigued so in your training runs it's ever more important to think about how you get that nutrition in as effectively as you can do Okay, so so so, what does that mean in practice? Forty-five minutes is that magic window. I said, I said before, get some good nutrition straight away. That's your first and optimal moment. If you can do that, then your body will take on nutrition much more effectively and much quickly, <coughs> much quickly, much more quickly than at any point afterwards. It's not to say it won't take on nutrition afterwards. It will, but that is, that forty-five minute window is super important. I'll just take a quick. <clears throat> I'm bored of water there as well. Any questions, guys? It takes two minutes for them to pop up on the screen after you've typed them. Now is the time to send me any more questions you might have. So, yeah, get that good nutrition in. And don't forget to keep doing that afterwards. I, I It took me a long time, I'll be honest with you. Um, I was just running, and my focus when I was training, out of those sort of seven or eight years that I was competing in the mountain race, for example, it took me... Um, till year four or five to realize that i was leaving something on the table boom boom sorry and i hadn't focused on nutrition at all i focused on training i was going to increase my training i was going to work more hard more hard <laughs> what's happening here i was going to work harder um i was going to do more in terms of effort i was going to be clever about how i trained and i did all those things and i saw results why didn't i get onto nutrition sooner because the moment i did I suddenly realized how much I'd not, uh, I'd, I'd just not thought about nutrition as a, as, a, as a performance improver. And my gosh, it made a difference. It made such a difference and continues to do so. So don't leave it on the table. Um, feel free to use that joke uh, whenever you like. Um, it, there's, there's a lot there. There's a lot there to benefit you, me, anybody as a runner from. Um, it's a subject to my second book. And I don't know whether I'm going to get more chance to do it at the moment, but, uh, it, it, you know, everything I've learned uh, from, from running, everything I've learned researching this book has shown me and has been evidenced uh, personally and with other runners that there is so much we can do uh, and benefit from good nutrition. If you missed part of this, this I'd urge you to, to watch it again. I know it's gone on. I know it's a long time for a live video for anyone to watch. There's a lot of information here. It's info heavy, and hopefully you, you'll have found it beneficial. So do take on that nutrition after your race, after your training runs. Don't do not forget. Um, <laughs> do not forget to do it um, during your training runs, guys. That's super important. Phil's just just made me laugh there. He said, "Wow, nearly an hour to until a bad joke." Do you know what, Phil? That's true actually, because because Phil has been unlucky enough to come on. No, I should say lucky, shouldn't I? Phil's been lucky enough to come on one of my train it, trail running events with me, so he knows the power of good jokes, right, Phil? And um, mine are not good. Um, <laughs> it, it it takes. I think they're good. Nobody else does. It takes. Uh, yeah, it takes something for me to hold back uh, for that length of time before I throw a bad joke out. So you, you're lucky today, guys. Um, but yeah, 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 yeah. You know, training runs, training runs, training runs are super important, and and it's not just about took me years to work out like i've just said why i don't know um don't waste your training runs because they are so important um waiting to race day for good nutrition is like waiting for a couple of days before you race and thinking i'll start training now we wouldn't do it we'd all wait work it out and do months of training beforehand right if you're going to do training to to pre prepare your body and get your performance on point nutrition will only help achieve that in a much more advanced way and give you an opportunity to have an edge on your competitors. I definitely want that, I'm pretty sure you do too. So that's pretty much it guys, I think. Um, questions now, if you've got them, will be great. Um, pop them in the comments. Uh, and if you think of them after, or you're watching this on a catch up, then do let me know. Um, pop them in the comments, I'll answer them. If you, if you wanna pop them through to me as a DM, by all means do that too. I'd, I'd love to hear your questions and get back to you. If you're interested in coaching, I do online coaching. 
I do a bit of one-to-one, but usually now it's, it's, it's more online. I tend to keep it to just 10 people because I think you get a better result and a better service out of me. Uh, so, um, but I- I- if someone else is interested, I will happily um, talk to you about that. My approach is a bit different, as you probably gathered. I don't coach people away very often. Others do. Um, it's about slowing you down more than anything else and giving you the support you actually need to do your race and that accountability. So if you're interested, let me know. Um, but I think that's it. No more questions by the looks of things. So I'm usually live on your running coach um, more regularly than, than uh, about this sort of stuff, about the coaching stuff. So if you're not a member of your running coach and you've been on one of my events or you're interested, um, do let me know. Tony, thank you. Yeah, it works. It's 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 true. Tony's been coached with me. He's, he's worked with me for, for quite some time. And it, those two words say it all. It works. Slowing down works. You know, it, it people don't always believe it but for those who've given it a shot you've seen the results um but it's important to do it the right way absolutely the right way is is crucial so have a chat with me um you don't need you know you don't need to pay for my advice i'm quite happy to give it for free um as anyone who knows me will tell you phil says great job jeff fascinating as always i've been trying out lots of the stuff you shared in snowden very grateful ready to knock out an hour off my marathon pb at manchester from york Racing. Oh, Phil, that's really good. You lo- you no- Did you actually knock an hour off your marathon PB? Phil, that's amazing. Really, really impressive. Oh, no, you're welcome. It's been really nice uh, having you on the live as well. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Tanya, um, for your questions and, and your comments. I really appreciate that. For everybody who's who's joined me today, I know I've gone on a bit, but if you know me, you already know I do that. Um, so I'm sure you're expecting it. <laughs> um, Questions is always popping through to me, guys. Listen, thank you so much for your time today. I wish you a great, a great experience and results running and a happy Saturday. And hopefully I will see you soon on one of my events or over here or on your running coach. All right, I'll leave you to it, everybody. Thanks again for your time and uh, I'll speak to you soon. Bye now.